All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm just gonna go over some of the basic filtering that we use and kind of search through when it comes to absentee owners, vacant owners, and, and possibly out-of-state owners. Um, so we'll go ahead and just get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go again with, let's just go with Harris County. Kind of been working through here quite a bit. I know they have quite a bit of vacants as well. So I'll go ahead and while it's loading, you can get, high, um, get started with the filtering. So let's see here, what should we start with? Let's just go ahead and start with absentee owners. So right off the bat, it's kind of our first one to hit is owner occupied and nope. Property characteristic, I'm gonna go ahead and search. Um, again, with this one, I always do two separate searches with same criteria, single family and then multifam. Um, same goes for condo. Um, I kind of just want to keep that usually I, all right <laughs> i'm kind of jumbling my words i would say in the beginning when you let's say get this um platform and you're have kind of limited in budget i always kind of just go through and you kind of want to just go through all single family homes first obviously those are the prime properties to go for in flipping wholesaling those are the most demand um, and then i would say once you kind of go through all single family homes and you own all the data and there's not much left to buy and you already have it in campaigns, then, you know, maybe then go to condos, keep those separate. And then, uh, but again, while you're going through the single family, I would also hit multifamily. But again, I would do those as two separate save searches, just so whenever you're uploading it to your master, master data sheets or your, you know, data management software, you know what's what and got the proper tags and management so that you can easily filter through again if you have to go back to redo campaigns or follow up campaigns and, and so forth so go ahead and stick with that we're going to go ahead and let's see here where's my square footage building size stick between thousand and three thousand now this is us again we mostly and for most of our clients, we actually don't have a client in Houston, so I'm kind of just going off a whim uh, in here in this county. But here in San Diego, California, I know Arizona, Washington, most of the places we kind of work in, this is just our go-to default between 1,000 to 3,000 because those are the good size homes uh, with good demand um, and you know good ROI. Now, there are certain markets, like I would say certain parts of outskirts of in New York, um, Ohio. Um, let's see here. A few other places where, um, let's see here. Oh, in Portland as well too. And then Utah, where I know some of our clients, they actually don't mind a minimum. They'll go for smaller homes because it's common to have smaller homes out there, like maybe two bedroom, one bath or two, two. Um, so again, it comes down to the area you're in and really it's just start with where's the most demand and then go from there. So that's kind of default what we go after. MLS status, always make sure you say off market. Then ownership info, we always always make sure you say individual, you can even throw in trust um, for it. Trust, this is a new feature that, a new filter. I just came out with PropStream. We haven't gone too much down this rabbit hole, um, which is kind of just searching specifically for trust. So when we search, we kind of just add both. Years ownership, by default, we kind of just stick to two years, two years minimum. That seems like a good one. Um, usually if they stay under two years, if they only owned it for less than two years, they kind of just bought it. Of course, they don't really want to sell right away or stick, especially since we're kind of going after vacants and absentee owners. Um, and this is a filter you can always come back and play with it to narrow down your search to a smaller list size. And then equity info, we're going to start with 20%. Let's just see where our numbers are at right there. So for absentee, we, we're at 58,807, and there is a lot in Houston. So from here, let's just say, I'm gonna go back to ownership info, and I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go after people who've owned it for a long time. Let's pick, man, let's pick 20 years. Let's just see, all right, there we go. That's, see, that could be a list right there you can save. They live, live there for more than 20 years. They could be tired of it, absentee owner, they could probably be fed up with um, with their tenants and they could be just ready to sell. So from here, I would go and I would just go and save search. And when we save searches, this whole filter right here, I'll actually just highlight it and then 
put it right here in the details. I want to know my filtering right here in the details. So when I come back to my searches, I see my details right here and I know exactly what I put in the filtering. So if I ever want to create a similar search, I know I don't have to guess or what was the filtering on that last search. I know exactly. So I know what filters to change to get a different list size. Hopefully that makes sense for you. From here, you know, this is a good list size. If you want to get granular with this list, you can I'll go ahead and just hit vacant. It's like, hey, how many absentee owners that have vacant properties that have owned it for more than 20 years? 200. Okay. Now this could be a good list you can pull. I would say, you know, because mailers are expensive, this could be a good list to send mailers or have your cold caller hit. Let's go back to, let's see here. Owner occupied, vacant. Shoot, we can even go. Hmm. Let's see here. Where is my out of state filter? Or am I blind right now? Oh, okay. Absentee owner location. Just for the heck of it, put out of state. Hey, there's nine. Nine people. <laughs> this would I would call these people up right now, actually. They've owned the property for more than 20 years. Absentee under vacant out of state. This these are nine people I would call and be like, you are probably tired of your property and tired of managing it out of state. Let me take care of that for you. Go ahead and uncheck that. We'll just, let's just reset this again. I would say those at three. I save them as three different lists um, and save them into your group section. So let's go back to. I'm gonna uncheck vacant. Go back to any owner occupied. No absentee. Twenty years. And again, I would create, what I would do is because there's so many absentee owners, quite a bit are vacant, I would save them as multiple different lists in your searches. I would do one, I would do one big one. I would save the one big one right here. This is, by the, this is the default search, 20% or more equity, individual, off market between 1,000 and 3,000. I would save this search. That way, when you come into PropStream and you want to play with this specific niche of data, you can just go to your searches, click on that. And then from that search, then you can get granular within it based off your budget. Um, always know, you know, before you buy data, know your budget, know your numbers saying, okay, if I have $2,000 to spend this month and go break it down backwards. All right. If this is how much it costs to send an RVM, this is how much it costs to send a letter or a text or my cold caller, then how much data can I buy with all the other costs? So what I would do is, like I said, I would save this as one big list, just to save it as a search, not actually not a list, just save it as a search. And then from here, I would create multiple save searches from within it. So I would go and do one and just hit vacant. I would save that as a search right there. Um, go back to absentee owner and then save based off of years. So I would say minimum of 20 years. I would do that as save that as a search right there. Then I would put minimum 10 to max 19 years, save that as a search, or you can do 15. And what I would do is because there's so many absentee owners, I would break it down in chunks. So that way I can save it for future months. Obviously I'm not going to buy that huge list. Well, I couldn't, you know, some investors can, if you have the budget, others you don't, especially if you're like a solo investor and you're limited between, you know, 2000 to $3,000 a month. So I'd break it down in years of ownership by increments. And then I would break it down, do a search, put in vacant, save that as a search. I would do vacant and out of state. I would save that as a search right there. I would even, uh, let's uncheck out of state and let's go back and uncheck vacant. Let's go just absentee owners. Actually, I would go absentee owner, hit occupied, go back to ownership info. No, I'm sorry. That's stupid. It can't be occupied. And then I'm not thinking guys hit any do absentee owner. It's any for occupancy status. Then I would go out of state. Okay. 6,394. Boom. I would save that as a search right there as well. Um, of course, if you want to get smaller than 6,000, then actually I forgot to release the max there of 19 years. Oh, it just went up. Okay, so 8,000, that's quite a bit. So then from here, I would then play with years of ownership. I'd put a minimum of 10 years. Boom, you got a list of around 25, a little over 2,500 people. So again, that's how I would uh, play with it for absentee owners. Um, 
let's see here. Let's go owner occupied. Let's keep it going with vacant. So let's go owner occupied. Let's put any. And let's just put vacant. Let's uncheck out of state. Let's see that. All right. Then I would save that as a list as well. And then again, like I said, if you want to get smaller than 9,000, because you don't want to pull ninth, you know, pull 9,000 or you know, skip trace that. What you could do is with PropStream, the basic account, you have up to 10,000 um, pulls. You can pull 10,000 properties. So you can always, always just pull it because you already paid for, excuse me, you already paid for PropStream. So I'll just pull it. And of course, based off your budget, then just copy and paste the amount you can skip trace over a separate spreadsheet and then upload that to, for your skip tracing. Or just within it, again, I would play with years of ownership um, based off of the rest of the criteria. And then, of course, yeah, pretty much years of ownership and then their location. You know, so you can even play with out of state or I mean out of county. Uh, I mean, yeah, out of state, out of county, who cares about that um, and local. But, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. I think that's it. That's really how we kind of do our searches and set them up for – you know, non-owner occupied, vacant, out of state. Um, and pretty much it, we kind of just narrow it down by that and by years of ownership. Not so much based off equity. doesn't really matter um, for us, especially at a certain point. If like, if we're going after absentee owners or we're going to start going after vacant owners um, or out of state, our goal is to really just tap out that whole list whether depending doesn't matter based off the equity at a certain point we're going to tap out that whole list and that should be your goal as well if you're going to start with you know one of those niches then set in stone that you're going to go and tap out that whole list whether it takes you a few months a year doesn't matter you know if it's going to take you more than a year then definitely um, especially in houston there's so many of course get granular with these different lists add in the different variables and I would, you know, set it like, okay, I want to go after a certain amount of liens a month. I want to go certain after a certain amount of absentee and vacant per month. Then set your default um, criteria, like I just showed you, and then go off of years who own the property. Um, you can also go, and sometimes what we do is year built. Um, I forgot to tell you that, my bad. Um, we also kind of go after year built. So we like to put sometimes... It was not it was built before 1999 because we want to go after older homes and who've owned it for a long time. I'll actually throw in one more search for you. This is one search we kind of go after. Like sometimes we've come across certain markets and counties where there's pretty much no pre foreclosures, barely any, uh, barely any liens, barely any absentee owners because it's not really a uh, an area where there's going to be renters or it's cheap enough to buy and nobody kind of puts it up for rent and then moves out of state. So this would be, and those are the type of areas too, based off that criteria. If there's not a lot of liens, if there's not a lot of pre foreclosures and not a lot of absentee owners, it's definitely a market where people have lived in their house for a very long time. And so this would be a search that we would do in that area. We would go owner occupied, um, occupied, not vacant, Property characteristics, single family, um, building size, stick to 1,000 to 3,000 square feet. You're built, and we're going to put a max of 1999. Your MLS status off market, ownership info. I'm going to go ahead and let's see here. Estimated equity, keep it at 20%. Go back to ownership info. I'm going to put 20 years. Oh, that's a huge list. All right, 27,000. All right, let's for 30 years minimum. Okay, too far. People haven't lived there that long. Okay, let's so put 25. All right, so this is a list, good size list, 4,713. Let's kind of creep up. Nope, too high. Okay, so it seems like 26 years. Seems like, oh, wow. All right, there we go. So check this out. These are homes that are owner occupied. Um, Single family, 1,000 to 3,000 square feet, built before 1999, off market. They've owned the home for 26 or more years, but based off the search, it seems like 26 years is the sweet spot. 
and it's individual owned with more than 20% equity, 978 properties. These are properties I'd put on a good letter campaign and uh, maybe once a month voicemail or text drip. Because these are people, they're older people for sure, and an older home, they're going to sell at some point, and it could be an older home that's never been upgraded. Either it's never been upgraded and it's going to be a great opportunity to flip, or they're just older people who's probably ready to just get rid of the house and downgrade to something else. So, and you can, could be a good referral for a realtor or if you are a realtor. So that's an extra bonus search I'll throw in there that I forgot we kind of do as well. So again, uh, hopefully that wasn't too much <laughs> to where your head was exploded. I know it's a lot of back and forth between the filtering, but how we've kind of set it up and how you should too is just have your default criteria. Always have your default criteria. So every time you hit and go on a market, you do your default criteria and then play with just a few of the different filtering. Years of ownership, uh, if it's a lean amount of lean that they own, year that and year that it's built, whether they're out of state, vacant, um, you get at this point. So hopefully that was very helpful um, in your searches. Again, every time if you play with a certain set of filtering, I would just save it as a search so that it's always something to come back on. And then if you ever save it to a marketing list, always, always, always time stamped the marketing list that you create and never always add more data to the marketing list. So for example, well, I'd say with vacants and absentees, it doesn't quite really matter. Um, but again, I always like to timestamp to know when I actually pulled that list. So that way, based off that date, I can come in here, set the date and find any new properties that popped up in that search for the date, you know, future you know, that came up past that new date, if that kind of makes sense. So hopefully this was helpful. Enjoy. This is why we like PropStream and why it's worked so well for us. And then what we do is we kind of just save these, pull the data, and then we upload it to um, our own kind of secret skip tracing service that's a little bit um, cheaper than PropStream. PropStream skip tracing is good. Nothing against it. Um, there are you know multiple skip tracing services out there. We just like to... We found one that's just a little bit cheaper and um, has a little bit higher of a hit rate for us. So, but again, you can't go wrong with this tool, um, especially alongside some great marketing tools out there as well.